Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an awesome app called Shoost. It basically allows you to take screenshots of your model in these really cool and atmospheric environments. That little photo shoot in the beginning was all taken inside Shoost, and no external effects were added. I'm going to show you how to install new Shoost for yourself, so that by the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to to start taking amazing selfies. Without rambling on for too long, let's get right into it, because this is a really cool app. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually install Shoost. To do this, we're going to have to become a Patreon of the creator, Muro, for about 5 bucks a month. You can cancel after one month, but just keep in mind that you won't have access to later generations if they decide to make more. With that being said, once you're a Patreon, you're going to want to click the Early Access tab, like that, and scroll down a little bit until you see Shoes version 0.6.0 or whatever version you're currently on. As I'm filming the video, this is the latest version, so I would click that and it would download there. Once it finishes downloading, you're going to want to click it, and you'll see a screen right here with Shoes v, v 0.610. Extract this somewhere where you'll remember because we're going to come back to this. And once you do that, move on to the next step. Go into the extracted folder and open up Shoes v 0.610 exe. By default, it's going to look like this. And you'll see that we actually have no model inside here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually get our model inside here. There are three main ways to do this, and I'm going to show you how to do all of them. The first method I'm going to show you is window capture. First, click this arrow until you reach window capture. Next, click the drop down until you see VTube Studio. Adjust the scale until your model is in a good position. See, that seems about right. The second method I'm going to show you is the NDI method. First, go to the settings tab. Then hit the checkbox for NDI capture. Go back to layer and hit the arrow until you see NDI capture. There I am. If you don't show up immediately, you'll want to hit this drop down and look for the NDI capture that's going to be yours. I only have one, so it's the first one for me. Oh, and something I didn't mention before is that you'll probably want to make the background of your VTube Studio green like this, so you can do a chroma key and make it transparent in the background. I believe by default that background underscore eight is going to be a green screen for VTube Studio, so give that a try if you want a transparent background like this. And of course, adjust your scale as you see fit. This last method is probably the most involved method, but it's pretty much the only way to make shoes to work with the VC face. First, go to settings and click Sprout Capture. Next, you want to go to the link in the description and install this little plugin, plugin right here. OBS Sprout 2 plugin install. Click that and then run through this installer. Come back here when you're done. Once that's installed, you want to open up OBS. Inside OBS, find your VC face model source and actually double click it. Then you want to make sure that allow transparency is checked. Press OK and now go to filters. Inside filters, you can want to press this plus button and add the sprout filter. Call it whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. And you can make this whatever you want, but keep this naming scheme of underscores for spaces. Once you're done with that, just press close and <laughs> get OBS out of here. Once you're back in shoots, go to the layer tab and then click on this arrow until you reach sprout capture. It's going to be the name that you chose before, and like before, you want to adjust the scale just like before. Make it however you want, and there you go. Your model is now inside Shoost. Now that we finally have our model in, we can start talking about the features of Shoost. Shoost uses only three layers, a background layer, a model layer, and a foreground layer. The background can be any type of image you want, and you can adjust its position and scale however you see fit. I recommend putting any assets you want to use inside VTube Studio as you'll have more control over the positioning, behavior, and scaling in there. Layer 1 is pretty basic when it comes to all that. Layer 1 also behaves just like Layer 3, so any image will work and you can adjust its position and scale. That's pretty much it for the Layer tab, so let's move on to the Effects tab. Now this is where the meat of shoes really starts to happen. Let's start with the modes. There are three of them. Normal, Diffusion, and Glow. They all behave differently with different backgrounds, so definitely feel free to experiment with that and see which works best for your background. Next, we have filters. Again, there are three of them. CRT style, video style, and film style. Also mess around with these because they'll make your scene look different based on what combination of mode and filter you choose. The color filter will nicely overlay the color you choose on your background. So if I go back to glow real quick and then adjust the slider a little bit, you'll see that the actual tone of the scene is kind of changing and you can mess around with that however you please. I'm not an artist so I don't know the specifics of what's actually happening but it's pretty useful sometimes if, if you want to change the tone of your scene. 
Exposure background does pretty much what it says and adjust the exposure of the background. So if these lights are too bright, I can lower them down a little bit, or if they're not bright enough, I can raise them up. Blend auto color is kind of interesting. This automatically adjusts layers one and two to match the color of the background. The slider actually adjusts how much it does it. So you notice that my model is kind of changing colors to match the scene in the back. The brightness slider will adjust the brightness of your model, while the contrast slider will actually adjust the contrast of the entire scene. Flare is kind of like this intense light that comes from a certain angle. You can adjust the intensity, angle, and opacity of it. It's best to just mess around with this one to get a feel for what it can do for your scene. Blur background does exactly what it says. It adds a nice blur to the background and sharpness increases the sharpness of your model. Alright, the camera section is pretty cool. You can drag this slider to zoom in and out of the scene really smoothly, just like that. You can also activate three different camera modes. Camera shake, pan follow, and a little vibration thingy. If you see camera shake, you can see this little menu pop up where you can adjust the intensity of the actual camera shake. You can make it seem like you're in an earthquake, or you can make it have like a nice little gimbal type effect. If you click on pan follow, you'll see a menu where you can adjust the speed of the following along with the actual smoothness of it. So if I raise up the speed a lot and I move around, you'll see that it follows me. And if I increase the smoothness, smoothness while I'm at it, it'll look a bit smoother. Definitely mess around with this and get a feel for what works best for your scene. Next, we have the rim light. This setting adds lighting around the contours of objects. It's best to use in dark or backlit scenes. All of these options are exactly what they say and are probably easier to understand if you just mess with them. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. The final tab we have is settings. So if you really like your scene right now and you don't want to lose your settings, you can actually save it right here by clicking file and then clicking save as. You'll get a pop-up like this where you can choose a location to store your dot shoes file. The next settings we have are the graphic options. You can actually choose to go into full screen for shoes, just like that by pressing alt plus enter. And to get out of it, you do the same thing. You can also change the frame rate in case shoes is taking up too much of your CPU and need to chill on your PC a little bit. The spout settings and the NDI settings are really only useful if you're using it to get your model in here. The last setting we have is the recording settings. You can actually natively take recordings of your model in shoes. You can adjust the resolution here to be whatever you want, adjust the file name, make it output to a certain directory, and you can even choose to capture your microphone. Underneath these two options, you can take a screenshot of what's currently on your screen, and you can press start recording to actually be in the recording. Overall, this is a really cool application and there's actually a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Let me actually uh, mess around the scene and show you what I can do. That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty much all the shoes. You now know everything you need to to start taking amazing selfies. So yeah, let's wrap up the video now. <laughs> well, what do you think? Is Shoes gonna be a game changer for you or is regular old VTube Studio good enough? Let me know down below. I'm actually curious to see how many of you will use Shoes after this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, leave a like below and consider subscribing. It really helps out with the algorithm. I've been thinking about more useful topics to cover, but if you have anything you wanna see, let me know in the comments. I will definitely look into it. Um. I don't really have anything else for you, so <laughs> bye, see you later.